Bonjour mes amis, c'est moi, Patsy, Unique P, et bienvenue sur ma chaîne pour une autre vidéo. For those of you who are new here, bienvenue fashionista. Here we speak about all things black fashion, lifestyle, travel, et je parle un peu de français. If you haven't already, give your girl a thumbs up, like, share, and bien sûr, subscribe. Aujourd'hui's video is another long overdue conversation with Marlene Aski, who is a holistic practitioner and she's also an author and have written four books. One novel, two historical books, and one dietary book. So she is a whole lot in one basket. And we are here to enjoy this conversation with her. Welcome, Marlene. Thank you for having me. So, Marlene, could you give us a little bit about your history in holistic? And we'll go into your books. What inspired you to be an author? Well, a little bit about myself. Well, I'm just a nature girl, I would say, <laughs> and outdoors, outdoor person. And it started from my mom uh, introducing us to fitness when we were about five. When I say we, siblings, my siblings and I. And we were told to go and exercise at 5 a.m. in the morning, get up and go for a walk. So that was my introduction into fitness. And we were living by the bayside in Dominica at that time, so to see the, the whole nature lifestyle. That was our back door. And growing up here in Antigua, my father from Antigua, Barbuda, and we got placed in cheerleading and, and different activities. And further on, we, as late teens, we started in, at the gym. And I got certified, my sister and I actually got certified in the fitness field. And that was over 30 years ago. Then later down, 25 years ago, I got involved with yoga and that came from a back injury that I got, well, twice. The first time I fell down on my tile mm. and um, I injured my back and had to go to the chiropractor and actually they would tell me about I might have to go on medication and, and actually go on some other medical Mm. <laughs> um, healing, yes. you know, modern like medicine, modern medicine, pull us up with yeah. medication. And um, I decided, you know, what else could I get into that would heal me in a holistic manner? And I went, but first of all, going backwards a little further than that, I did a yoga class. I participated in a yoga class with mm -hmm. ladies around 60 year old, 70 year old. I think the oldest was in their 80s and the mm -hmm. youngest was in their like late 60s. Mm -hmm. And they were going in, they were contortionists. I would say they were going into <laughs> all these positions. That was, by then I was 23. Could okay. not even imagine my body going into it, although I was into fitness. Mm -hmm. And you know, somebody tell me, why don't I go back to that yoga class? And, right. and I said, after a while, the first, really and truly, the first day I went, I was in so much pain. I did not <laughs> actually took years before I, you know, like venture into that yoga again. But mm -hmm. after my back injury, I went to a few classes. It was painful as ever, and I gave myself about two weeks to, if it doesn't work, I will just like find other alternative okay. ways to heal in my back. Mm -hmm. And I, the, during that last two days of that second week, I noticed improvement in body strength, in alignment, in, you know, relaxation. It was not just physical, it mm. was, you know, internal. It mm -hmm. was, you feeling a little bit mentally stronger, physically right. stronger. You feeling, you know, like you, you're fixing the whole part of you instead of overall heal, healing, instead of just one area. Not just my back got better, but I noticed my knees got stronger, my wrists, you know, because you know, by that time, you know, I started using the computer and right. you know, couple um, you right, know, couple tunnel, yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. tunnel, yeah. And then uh, what happened? 
I just realized my wrist got stronger with, with practicing yoga and let me knock on wood to this day I don't have any issue with my wrists and that has been over 25 years That's now amazing. so it's it's it, it's so yoga goes a, a whole lot deeper than just the physical aspect to it you know if you notice in the backdrop you've seen a few of the kinetic style of yoga mm -hmm. and um, that is just amazing in itself to you have to tell us about what some of these mean yes. so our audience uh -huh. can take some practice in yoga and uh -huh. helping themselves to heal yes and you know and that's how my journey started into the holistic practice uh -huh. and after that i went and got certified and it it i'm still learning and you know right now i'm looking into kemetic yoga so it's an ongoing journey all through the years of my wellness practice that's so cool um i like to exercise but i am more on the walking side of it i like um i like long walks especially on quiet spaces that i can get in tune with my mind and really meditate um, that's my best form of exercise other than that um, it is for me just um, cardio and that's it but I really like um, your journey I it's unfortunate how it started but I'm happy that you can tell the story of how your body have healed through exercise and good practices rather than the modern day medicine what happened also the modern medicine is needed also but it's good to have alternatives in 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 what approach you're going to take to heal yourself because i mean i always advise my uh, my clients that if they have ha are having acute pain mm -hmm. Please check your doctor immediately. Don't okay. even think about it. Just mm -hmm. go to your doctor. Mm -hmm. There is a difference between acute pain and chronic pain. Now, when it becomes chronic, that means, and you've been going to the doctor for years, I will hear people say, Oh, I'm checking the doctor for my arm, I'm taking this for my back, I'm taking this. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, you can interact with your doctor and, and you can go a holistic way also with the modern medicine. I mean, usually people think Balance either out. one or the other mm -hmm. but sometimes the doctors themselves send their patient to go and exercise right even before i've had quite a few clients where the doctor will tell them practice yoga mm -hmm. before a surgery okay yeah because or, or build up their muscle strength in their legs mm -hmm. before a knee surgery okay so so right now the modern medicine is actually working with alternative holistic practice mm -hmm. So, so sometimes it exactly depends on the doctor you're going or the facility that you you have engaged in. That's why they would always say go for a second opinion right. or, or, or keep your research, do your own research. Mm -hmm. And there's so many information online. The only problem online is <laughs> there's the good and the bad and the yes. ugly yes. and the beautiful. So there's any, it's like a dictionary. If right. you go into the dictionary, you're going to find what you need. But is it what you need? It, do you you have to know what you're looking for? That's right. Mm -hmm. So if you're not, if you don't have the knowledge of what you're looking for, and you just come across the first thing that they tell you, then mm. you just take it for right. that's the word that you need, and then you take it and you go with that. So that's pretty cool, Marlene. I um, find that you know just sitting down and speaking with you and your sister and you know one or two other people at 56 i'm learning so much it's i am learning so so much you know what and you know why i keep studying and learning i did i made a major mistake after finishing school when I finished high school, I thought I would take a major break. I don't want to see any learning books. I don't want to learn nothing. I finish. I've done it. I, 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 I'm taking. I've given my brain a break. Well, the brain took a uh, took a real break and actually turned down. <laughs> I had to relearn quite a bit of things when I got when I went back to my books. I mean, I was like, oh my gosh, the brain went to sleep. Mm. And never again. Will I allow my brain to fall asleep 
again. So I just keep learning. It's I I, I mean, and also doing my history um, mm -hmm. studies. Um, I just amazed by Imhotep, that is a pharaoh. I mean, he was he left from science to medicine to um, to to priesthood to so he had so many names under mm -hmm. his belt. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So he was just so when so this is why you will find me in all kind of books, and I used to feel guilty. Why can't I stick with one mm. subject, you know, or genre? And I'm like, no, I'm an Imhotep. Okay, and that leads us into the next part of our conversation when it comes to your writing. Mm -hmm. And uh, the first book that we're going to look at is Visual Expressions. And all of the books that we're going to be speaking about today can be bought on Amazon yes. or there is the contact information if you want to get the book directly from the author. So visual expressions and this is a collection of visual poetry and we are going to you see it has a lot of pictures beautiful pictures and poetry and here we have a very short one wake up get out of your mind be present and this is from Eckhart Tolle, The Power of Now. And this is so inspiring because we get up every day and we don't know the power that we have and we just let the day go by. Whereas we need to get up, get out, and let your mind be present. Yes, that's this important. Is absolutely wonderful and I have seen other passages in here but I'm not gonna give it all away you guys can purchase the book and have a good read of it but maybe I'll give you one more put your dream to the test by John C Maxwell and you know at my young age I am finally putting my dream to the test and seeing yes. how far it's going to get me. So, um, very inspirational book and I encourage you all to get your hand on a copy. So, now that I've given you a little snippet bit about the book, Marlene is going to give us a little bit of her inspiration behind writing these books. Yeah, so what happened with this book? This is like a manual for me and I want to share because it's not just my words alone in poetry and, and uh, photos. It's like books that have inspired me, have motivated me throughout my um, journey in life mm -hmm. and also my collection in my library. And these quotations I want to put together to actually when I feel like procrastinating a little bit mm -hmm. I and get on my feet, I will open this book to give me some inspiration, motivation, and also just looking at the photos, just being one with nature. Because what happens sometimes, you're getting out of bed, but you're a little bit like sluggish. Yes. But when you look at a photo, you're like, okay, there's beauty out mm -hmm. there. You need to mm -hmm. get up and get moving. And if you know, I'm also, I have a lot of writing on my own writings in the book because there's <laughs> enough space to just write in there, you know, because I've made it mine. And uh, yes, you, as you said, you can get your copy on Amazon. Also, it's in Kindle format. Okay. And yes, it is in Kindle format. And also, I have this quotation that is mine. Um, I used to write quotations quite a bit myself, but I shared one that I that really gets me going. Okay. The the joy that we seek, the the happiness we keep searching for, it's all within. And that quotation That's came. Powerful. And that quotation came to me while walking in India. You know, I was walking the streets, and okay. you know, and I mean, India reminds me of the Caribbean in a sense. And you're like, oh, a big country can remind you of the the Caribbean. Mm -hmm. But so, it's not so much the topography. It is also the people. It is an interaction people itself mm -hmm. it is just like little things that they do mm -hmm. and how I see the scenery it reminds me 
of my growing ears in the Caribbean. Thank you, Marlene, for giving us that backstory on visual expression. And the next book that we're going to look at is your novel, What Happens in Santorini. And this is the cover of the novel, very sensual. And could you give us the inspiration for you writing a romance novel? Because we've just gone from poetry to now romance, although it's a similar flow. It is mm -hmm. a similar flow. So give us a little story behind what happens in Santorini. Oh, in Santorini, that's because I, my mom and I took a cruise to Greece. Okay. And we started off in Italy and then made our way to Greece. And we were actually supposed to be going to Turkey, but there was a civil crisis okay. in, um, in that area, mm -hmm. <clears throat> can't recall what was happening then, but there was something happening there. And they had a detour to Santorini, okay. which I didn't mind, but Turkey is, mm -hmm. uh, somebody told me I should put it back on my bucket list. It has quite a bit of ancient history also, so mm -hmm. it has to get back on my bucket list. Okay. But what happens in Santorini? I went on this cruise and I saw a couple that, you know, maybe the aura inspired me. It's not that, not this couple, but the, it was an interracial couple and, okay. you know, the way how they were in love. And I'm like, oh, look, who are you? <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know, all right. I mean, they were young and, mm -hmm. you know, and, and that's the thing about that cruise. It was more mature people. And I saw this couple, they inspired me and then I'm like, you know what? I'm gonna make up a story from them. So I just wrote some little pinpoints on, on that on the proofs of what, I, what mm -hmm. I'm gonna talk about. Mm -hmm. So when now I came back mm -hmm. home, I just put it all together. Okay. And, you know, and came up with this scenario. I don't know anything. I didn't even talk to the couple, actually. <laughs> I just, you know, so that's it's just like with, with the poetry. It is like looking at the clouds, looking at the mm -hmm. different, um, going on hikes. As you said, you like outdoors. I like yes. that too, going outdoors hiking, and then you get this storyline. And mm -hmm. you know, and I did a little research on Santorini mm -hmm. and know what is in Santorini and came mm. up with this, Ooh, la, la. Yeah, with this story mm -hmm. here. Yeah, which is really going real good and you can still find it on Kindle and, and Amazon and also Best of Books if you're living in Antigua in St. John's they have that. Okay. Yeah. I can only imagine just the way she's looking at her gentleman. Yes. This story is hot. So get your copy and have fun reading this romance novel. The next book that we're going to look at is more of a history book. This one is called The Journey, Empires and Kingdoms. And this one really has a lot of information in it. Um, pictures of the whole journey of us as a people and where we came from and the kingdoms. Like the Kingdom of Kush faced several challenges over time. I won't say anymore. Figure out what were those challenges. So what was the inspiration behind of the journey? Well, the journey, even in my yoga practice, I found out that there is history, black history in yoga. So when I first started out as a yoga practitioner and my first studies in Colorado, mm -hmm. I did. I, I did the Western way of practicing yoga. Okay. I mean, although they're based off in India, they have formatted it into their way of doing their yoga. And, you know, and it, every, every book that I've read said it, it's coming from India. Right. And years later, and I left it as that, but the years later, maybe about like five years ago prior to COVID, mm -hmm. I found out that there is actually yoga from Egypt and and actually Egypt well I did find out you know, earlier on that Egypt was originally you know, black people right um, but I didn't pursue it right you know you know my mom she she knows a little bit about history so she was always 
introducing us to our black history mm -hmm. and you know usually it for me history was like most people like how, I, how we felt about history why disturb the now why go there forgive forget move mm -hmm. on mm -hmm. you you're not going to get anywhere going back down that right. lane mm -hmm. and that was my thoughts really just know keep a low profile keep going stay on your lane Mm -hmm. kind of thing and what happened with that you feel lost and just like how Marcus Garvey and I put, I got introduced to Marcus Garvey book years ago but I didn't read it thoroughly, thoroughly um, over the years just when I feel inspired I would just read a little mm -hmm. verse here a little chapter here mm -hmm. and really dig into Marcus Garvey message to the people where he says the, the people without knowledge of their history is like a tree without roots and even the trees that you put in water they try to get their roots to stay yes. stabilized and yes. grounded yes. and i am realizing over the years without that history it deeply affects my life because and i'm finding out that everybody else know my history except my race <laughs> <laughs> well, I shouldn't say that, not because there's quite a few um, it people. Is, it is very that, true. Um, majority of us, we do not know our history, mm -hmm. and we're not even making any attempt to mm -hmm. learn that history. So that's a very true statement, myself mm -hmm. included. You get taught history in school, but not mm -hmm. the history of your history. Yes. You get taught somebody else's history, yes. and we are uh, so programmed that we go through life and we don't even give it a second thought until mm -hmm. either we're getting old and we start to slow down and pay attention to what's going on around us or some who are fortunate to have a support system around them at a young age who points out things to them and you're curious enough to want to see what those things are but Across the globe, I honestly feel that if you had to put a hundred of us from each part of the globe in a room, maybe only 20% of us would really know our true history and how rich that history is. Yes, and you rightfully said that you mentioned true history. I always know that knowledge is good, but right knowledge is wisdom itself. And, um, and what is right knowledge? You might even say, okay, what is right knowledge? But what is knowledge that works for you? That yes. is the right knowledge. Mm -hmm. Because if you're going to study somebody's history, that's not working for your benefit. That, right. does, that makes you feel inferior. That right. cannot be right. So that's not right knowledge for you. Mm -hmm. That is mm -hmm. right knowledge for them. That's right. And, and this is why, and mind you, I love history overall. I always was, I always love history, even mm -hmm. in school, even with the Columbus discovered this. I even like reading about that. Right. And I do not learn my history with hatred or right. with any um, negativity. Yes, right. I take the good and I take the bad and I yes. take the ugly and realize that is, this is history. Mm -hmm. And what can I do? Just like how I program the yoga to work within my lifestyle, is so I'm programming the, the, my black history to work with my lifestyle. Because when I'm now discovering, as I said earlier, I'm an imhotep, imhotep, you know, it's to learn now. I can be proud that I can be confident because somebody else might come up to me and say, oh, you don't know what you want. You, you all over the place. You, one time you write in, poetry one time you write in history and I've always heard people you know like stick to one thing or um, you know jack of all trade master of none you hear all these things right and you thinking that you must you must do this to stay focused some of us just have more no, more like inspiration curiosity, curiosity <laughs> more creativity we need it, it all plays into play because actually I don't look at it that it, this is all four different genres. I look at it as is one genre because it's a journey of my life. Yes. I wasn't. I, I I was looking at the clouds. I was in yoga. I did poetry and um, photography. I was in Santorini at the cruise. I'm present. I did a love story right there. I am now. I, I now into black history. And I was always into black history. <laughs> <laughs> let me let me rephrase that. So now I'm embracing my history yes 
Yes. And now that I'm embracing my history, I can confidently write about it. Yes. And what inspired me now, I did a course, I did a course with it, I did um, level one and level two. And what happened, during level one, I went off to Africa. I wish I had known all this before going to Africa because I would have set my journey differently okay. because some friends were going off to Ghana mm -hmm. and it just that I had already booked that, that flight with going to uh, Namibia and I love Namibia, I love Africa no matter where I go in, <laughs> which corner I go in Africa, I love it but I'm just saying I would have maybe programmed myself or, a little, or a, a little differently or arrange my trip a little differently that I could just like slide over. So what I'm saying with that, I would have loved to have the book with me. I would have had to look, it's, it would be nice to have that guide. So when I came back, I did level two, so I found out a whole lot more. Oh, okay. And I wish now that when next time I'm visiting Africa, I'm working with my book so that I can like register places and write yes, up on yes, it and, very and, note and make note of what question to ask when I go on a tour and you know get some more information so that that's the highlight Absolutely of this wonderful book. so again guys it's called the journey and we all need to take a journey in life and see our history whether you are from the African nation or you're from the European nation everybody needs to know their journey and what a better way to find it than in a book. Last but not least, we have Radiant Living, which is going to be a quarterly magazine. And I can speak about this one. This is volume one. And this has in lots of little snippets and good habits. Things that you should practice if you are looking for a good diet things that you should practice if you cannot sleep, if you have insomnia like me and waking up at 2 o'clock in the morning and can't go back to sleep. There is practices in here, which I have to tell you, I tried it. Mm -hmm. And Saturday and last night, I slept very peaceful. Nice. And I'm a person that I struggle with sleeping through the whole night. I'm normally mm -hmm. up at 2 o'clock and then I can't go back to sleep and I watch TV or just get on the computer and do nothing and that was not good for me but after I, I took the magazine to work last week and in my mm. downtime mm. I went through it and I said you know what let me put some in it. Mm. I turned off the TV mm. um, by nine o'clock the mm. TV was off mm. and then I started doing some breathing practices and mm -hmm. stuff like that yeah. and I found that you know sleep came and it lasted good, good. five o'clock in the morning is when I opened in my eyes yeah nice yes. lovely yeah. it's really really helpful and it's good that you're noticing these things about your body mind you I'm not a nutritionist or a dietitian it's just a basic plan to give you an idea it's so the, moderation moderation is the key Moderation okay. is the key. Okay. Do not try to eat too much, mm -hmm. just a little mm -hmm. portion here and there. Actually, it's been proven scientifically. If you know this amount is going to full up your stomach, right? You just try and go a little less. Mm -hmm. well, and thanks. this came about, this book came about because, I mean, for years people have been asking me, where's my wellness book? I'm into the wellness. So, I mean, I mean, where's the wellness book? We mm -hmm. see the romance, we see the yes, history. The history. Mm -hmm. Where's the wellness book? So this is just a tidbit of the introduction. So I said, you know what, let me just take it because wellness is a whole mm -hmm. nother gameplay. Mm -hmm. You don't just write a, a little a book and say, I am well. Mm -hmm. And now with people daily lifestyle, mm -hmm. do not let them, it doesn't allow them, time does not allow them. Yeah. You, you take something out of the book mm -hmm. and this is why this manual works and this quotation works because you don't have... I mean, really, if you sit down in 20 minutes, maybe you finish off the book. Yes, yes, But yes. what happened is, is it's a manual. So you just go pick on a quotation, a poem, and look at some nice photos with that. Yeah. And actually get your day posted. Absolutely. Thank you for spending some time with us. It's been a and pleasure. And um, guys, I really encourage you to get your hand on one of her books. If you can't, 
really, like she said, read. Open a book and read. Um, there's lots of different ways we can find books now. Um, they may not be the hardcover, but there's still opportunities there for you to get education. So guys, thank you again for spending another beautiful evening with me and Marlene. Thank and you. until next time, have a wonderful week everybody. Abietto, au revoir, à tout à l'heure.